This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Hello and welcome to Ag AM Kansas. Today we're at the BIF convention in Manhattan and I'm here with Dr. Mark Inns. So tell me a little bit about your job duties. Uh, my job duties, I, I'm a professor at Colorado State University. Uh, in theory, my job is 35% research, research and, and most of that is primarily on beef cattle genetics. And then half the time I'm supposed to spend teaching and the other half is to do service and outreach, specifically talking to producers, offering service to the beef industry. So you're going to be talking to, uh, tomorrow at the yep. convention about understanding cow efficiency and profitability. Yep. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, what, what we want to do is, is take into account the fact that in most cow-calf operations and in the beef industry from a whole, uh, 50 to 75 percent of your costs are associated with feeding and maintaining the beef cow. Okay, so if, if that's the case, really it seems to be a good opportunity for something that we, if we could select and make genetic improvement that we could reduce costs and improve the profitability of beef production. And so what I'm going to talk about tomorrow is how do we evaluate, how do we select sires that will produce daughters who have lower maintenance costs? And talk about some of the current tools that we have in the industry that are available, some of the weaknesses of those. What are some of the tools that you're using? The, the, the tools that we're using, it depends on which breed association you work with, but we have mature weight and mature height EPDs. Uh, and a number of breed associations have those. We also have uh, the dollar energy value produced by the American Angus Association. And then some associations also produce what we call a maintenance energy EPD. And so all of those, depending upon which breed you prefer, uh, are available to make selection decisions on bulls you might use or purchase to bring in your program to reduce your overall cow costs in the future. So how does this all come back full, full circle for profitability, efficiency, and sustainability for the beef producer? That, that's a very good question because the way it comes back is in the form of how do we use that realizing that we're selling a product. So if you're a producer retaining ownership and selling on the, on the a grid basis, you're worried about carcass weight and marbling and yield grade. And if you're a producer who's selling weaned calves but keeping replacement females, you're still worried about selecting the right bulls to put females back into your program. Yeah. But you got to do that in context because you're getting paid for weaning weight. And you know, if you just selected for increased weaning weight, you're going to increase mature size. So we have to have some way to balance that. And so these tools, we can use those in a systems context to reduce maintenance costs while still being able to select for improved income, if you will. And the best way to do that, and what I'm going to talk about a little bit tomorrow, is in, through the selection index. And I've got an example of an organization uh, that did use an index and was able to maintain mature size while increased carcass weight over time, which <clears throat> is not easy because bigger cows produce bigger car carcasses and if you're selecting for heavier carcass weight or heavier weaning weight, you're probably going to get bigger cows. So how do we stop that increase in cow size? And uh, it's a good illustration of the use of selection index to achieve an objective that might not otherwise be possible. So. I, I kind of liken this to, to, you know, one of the trends in the industry is selection for uh, uh, high spread bulls. Bulls that have a low birth weight EPD but a lot of yearling weight growth. Well, those are unfavorably related because typically birth weight would go up as you improve yearling weight. But with the tools we have, we've been able to, if you will, break that correlation and select animals that have a low birth weight but still have higher growth. Well, if we have the tools uh, available for selecting for reduced maintenance energy, we could do the same thing. Some of the weaknesses we currently have is the fact that we're not getting enough data from a lot of our seed stock producers on cow size to help us choose the right bulls. So that's going to be an emphasis of my talk too. We need to get better reporting rates in the seed stock industry to help us make a better tool. And then I'll briefly touch on how we might use genomics in the, in the future to make more accurate selection decisions. Well, thanks for the information, and hopefully no. producers start using those genomic tools yep. that are available to them, and mm -hmm. hopefully they take some uh, information out of your talk tomorrow. Oh, thank you very thanks much. It's been a pleasure. Us.